Let us look. Inside of a tube furnace. Right? How the tube furnace look like from inside. What we do, these are the ends. And we put a tube of aluminum, alumina, aluminum, Al2O3, not aluminum, right? Aluminum or molite, which is aluminum silicate, a tube here. And we put a sample with some holder in the middle of the tube, right? When it is covered like this, we can close it and we call it open air environment and we heated that material in open air if we shut the holes at the ends and put a small pipe of oxygen nitrogen helium or anything then we can do controlled environment heating of the material so that oxygen cannot reach that material Right? So it is called oxidizing or reducing atmosphere. When you see these things in books, they are basically done through this way. If you are doing it in air, open air, then leave it like that. If you want it in oxygen atmosphere, then pass oxygen, keep on, clean it, evacuate it. We have pumps and that pump evacuates it and then releases a small amount of oxygen into the sample so that it is an oxidizing atmosphere. If you don't want it to be oxidized, then you put nitrogen or helium environment so that no oxygen can reach there. This is material analyzer and it does the same job as I told you for the dielectric constant and those properties of the material. This uh, machine is very interesting. It is called glass dielectrometer glass dilatometer what the glass dilatometer does it does three things it tells you about the glass transition temperature of the material you melt the material then you suddenly cool it up to the glass transition temperature and slightly below it and then anneal it in the next furnace so when you don't know the glass transition temperature you can't do that and this machine tells you about the glass transition temperature of the material. This, the sample is placed here, right? And number one, glass transition temperature. And second, it tells you about the thermal expansion coefficient of the material. When we say that two materials with thermal expansion coefficient mismatch are brought together, they will crack because one will expand more and the other less and the result will be cracking. So the thermal expansion coefficient can be determined here. It also tells you about the yield point of materials and it goes up to the 1200 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is an ordinary optical microscope, right? This is the auto pellet press, this one. So you select a specific pressure and switch on the button and it presses the material up to there. Now, process the material, properties of the material. If the properties are not good, what you have to do? You will have to characterize the sample. For characterization of samples, we have different facilities. And I will take it in parallel. I am always telling you in the classroom that we need small size samples for transmission electron microscopy. Right? For transmission electron microscopy, we need small size of sample. This, this unit you see, this is called ultrasonic drill. Ultrasonic drill. The diameter of the pipe here, you see, 
it is 3 millimeter 3 millimeter diameter so you prepared the pellet sintered the pellet then you polish the pellet grind the pellet to 100 micron size thickness 100 micron thickness when it is 100 micron thick you fix it on a hard glass with araldite or what you call LP type material if it can be removed later but people usually use crystal bond so that you can heat it a little bit and then you can remove the material so you fix the material on this hard glass with that side of uh, crystal bond type material put it here bring it down and it cuts for you 3 millimeter disc that 3 millimeter disc is 100 micron thick for that purpose here this is called dimpling machine it is called dimple when you uh, some people have dimples here dimpling in Pashto means kote right so what you do you put the hundred micrometer the hundred micrometer thick sample on this place and this thing this moves around here like this right this moves like this and this wheel runs like this vertically and this horizontally what happens in the middle it creates a dimple and that dimple when it reaches 25 micrometer then it is suitable for argon ion thinning argon ion thinning machine is in the CRL right so how do you know it is 25 micron thick we have calibrated optical microscope you focus the bottom of the dimple and focus the top of this dimple bottom of the pink dimple and the top of the sample from where you started and that difference when you have a micrometer in the optical microscope it tells you how much difference was between the two foci the two focuses right it's called foci that that difference tells you about the thickness of that dimple right so when you have once you have done that then you take it to the argon ion thinning what is argon ion thinning you can check this this is a small microscope type thing in with which you can check the thickness time and again argon ion thinning is it is also like this this thing right it is a circulating sample holder remember you have three millimeter sample that three millimeter sample is fixed and that socket of that holder inside the argon ion thinner when it is fixed there this is circulating like this and two argon beams are coming like this you can adjust the angle at which angle it should come so if you put 15 degree it will thin the sample but it will not be usable in the microscope so I usually used 11 to 12 degrees because when it is like this it is thinning the sample vertically I don't know don't need vertical thinning I need thin area and for that area I will keep the angle like this so when the, the angle of the argon beams is like this then they are just skipping the surface they are not digging the surface skipping the surface when it is skipping then you get about 20 nanometer thick sample for transmission electron microscope you need electron transparent material and electron transparent means that the electron beam can pass through there sometimes some materials 
cannot be thinned down to that level. For that you need higher voltage microscopes. When the voltage is higher, the energy of the beam will be more. More the energy, the wavelength will be smaller. 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 And it can penetrate into the sample and give you the detail. Some samples are very easily thinnable and in that case you can use conventional microscope 100 kV or like that to know about the details of the sample. So here you thin down the sample and you prepare the sample. Remember that. <coughs>